Welcome back, folks. I'm Jake Allenbogen, and today we're going to be continuing this with this little what if, uh, you know, scenario thing that I have going on here, like mini series. Uh, before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. Now, let's dive into it. So, I had this idea, and the reason I had this idea was because the Falcons back in 2011 traded up from 27th overall for, to 6th to acquire Julio Jones. Now, the Browns didn't just send Julio Jones to the Falcons. No, no, no. On draft day, the Browns sent that pick to the Falcons. They drafted Julio Jones, and he said he was surprised. He didn't think a team would invest that much in him. Those were his words. So this trade package, by the way, Les Snead was part of this staff. Uh, he actually you know, left. Um, the next year, he became the Rams general manager. But that season... That year, Thomas Dimitrov invested a lot of the 2011 draft and some of the 2012 draft in the draft trade to acquire Alabama receiver Julio Jones. And the Browns received the 27th overall selection. They also received the first round pick from the Falcons in 2012. They received a second round pick in the 2011 draft and a fourth round pick uh, in the 2011 draft and in 2012. So in total, the Falcons had to give up a 27th overall pick. So a first rounder, a first rounder the following year, a second rounder, a fourth rounder uh, that year, and then a fourth rounder the following year. That's what it took to trade up from 27th overall to pair Julio Jones with Roddy White. So why am I talking about the Falcons? Why did I just mention Les Snead? I mean, it's a dead giveaway. I don't know what this title will end up being after uh, I record this, but it's a dead giveaway. We're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. And ironically, I had just tweeted out Marvin Harrison Jr. equals Julio Jones. And there were people that said, I kind of see that. I kind of don't see it. To me, I don't know how you don't see it. I think he looks exactly like Julio Jones. Somebody who is six foot four that has actual bulk at wide receiver, that can work out of the slot, that can work, you know, all over the that is Julio Jones. That agility, the ball skills. Marvin Harrison Jr. is one of the closest things I've seen to a perfect wide receiver prospect. So, obviously, we know the buzz. We've heard the buzz. He's going in the top five. I would really guarantee he goes in the top four. Now, the what if here is, what if the Rams acquired Marvin Harrison Jr.? Now, let me just say this. You guys might not know this. Some of you might. Some of you might not. How fitting would it be, by the way, based on what I'm going to tell you, if the Rams acquired Marvin Harrison Jr., they traded up to get him, and they're the same organization that passed on his father, Marvin Harrison, the Hall of Famer, didn't have to trade up, passed on him for Eddie Kennison. Now, they did get Torrey Holt, you know, figured that out. But, they, yeah, they could have had Marvin Harrison. So, Marvin Harrison Jr. plays a position in which the Rams have shown a lot of interest in the past. They've spent a lot of capital. They've given up a lot of capital for, you talk about Sammy Watkins, you talk about Brandon Cooks, you go out and get Cooper Cup, you draft Josh Reynolds, you know, a lot of capital signing Odell Beckham Jr., drafting Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell. I mean, the list goes on. So they care about this position. They interviewed Roma Dunze at the combine. Would they ever make this move? Like I mentioned, Les Snead was in the building when Thomas Dimitrov made this move. Um, and you know, he was second to Thomas Dimitrov in the pecking order, so he was also behind this move. I, I'll tell you this. 
it would seem a little shocking, but I really wouldn't be shocked if Les Snead pulled this off. Now, I actually took the liberty of doing something like this. And now, before we, we talk about this, before we talk about what it would cost, we have to figure out who the hell are the Rams trading up with in the draft. That is the most important thing. Okay, so I actually have a trade value chart um, on drafttech.com. Shout out to them that I'm looking at right here. Now, this chart is called the Rich Hill Model 2024. The reason behind this, teams are reported to use a revised trade value model in recent years, as discussed by Bill Belichick. Draft Tech provides an alternate trade value model developed by Rich Hill of Pat's Pulpit, which we believe more accurately reflects the trades of the past several years. Originally, this was a Jimmy Johnson model, and it has since been toyed with a little bit. Based on this, you give a numerical value to every pick. So the Rams draft capital comes out to be 514 value points, okay? That is as many total in the draft. That's as many as the Patriots' first-round pick at three. Now, talking about this, I think if the Rams were to make this move, they would have to jump Arizona, which is also part of the logic behind if they were going to do this, why you would want to jump Arizona, why you would trade up. See, not only does it help you, but it also screws over your division rival, Arizona Cardinals, because you everyone knows, and this is the problem when you go into a draft and you're at the bottom or rather the top of the draft and you have the quarterback position taken care of. In a draft like this, everyone knows they want Marvin Harrison Jr. And what's funny is this trade could so easily be a rug pull done by the Rams. And the reason I say that is because at pick one, Chicago is going to take Caleb Williams, right? We all know that. Pick two, it's either going to be Drake May or it's going to be uh, Jaden Daniels. Now, I think it'll be Jaden Daniels, but it could be Drake May. Pick three, New England could get their quarterback in the future. However, they could also trade down. And in this draft, with the buzz McCarthy has and, you know, May and, you know, Daniels, whoever is there at three, everyone is going to suspect that if New England is willing to trade down, and they just got Jacoby Brissett, by the way. So if they're willing to do that, then you still have Michael Penix Jr. You have Bo Nix. These are some guys that they could get later on that maybe, okay, they sit a year behind a guy like Jacoby Brissett and start him. If they were comfortable with that, it gives them an opportunity here to package this pick and get a King's Ransom. And so... The reason I bring this up is because Arizona is thinking anybody who's trading up to three is trading up for a quarterback. You're not going way up for a wide receiver. So we're good. Marvin Harrison Jr., if he's not picked by New England, and we don't think so, we're, we think they'll pick a quarterback, then we're good. We don't have to worry. We're not going to trade up to three to secure him. Not going to happen. So while they sit there, at four, the Rams have an opportunity here. And now understand it took when the Falcons traded up from 27th to sixth overall, that took a lot. It took the Falcons first. It took the Falcons future first. It took a second. It took a fourth and a future fourth. So if you're doing the math there, it took five picks. I don't think it would take the Rams that much, actually. Because the Rams are not at 27th. They're actually sitting at 19th. If you're wondering, Arizona has the 27th pick. That is 216 points in the 
Rich Hill model. The Rams' 19th pick is 278. Now, with the Rams, to get up to 514 points for the New England Patriots, the Rams would have to move a future first if they wanted to secure the rest of their draft because they have enough. Based on their 514 points, and obviously it's not going to be deadly accurate, the Rams could offer more. They could offer less, and the Patriots could accept it. But the Patriots moving down to 19 would acquire the 52nd overall pick, so the Rams' second rounder, and a 2025 first rounder. So what if? What if the Rams did this? What if the Rams made the biggest move of the draft? This would overshadow everything. If the Los Angeles Rams traded up from 19 to 3 after not drafting in the first round since 2016, and mind you, in 2016 when they traded up and got their quarterback, he's no longer their franchise quarterback. They already made that crazy trade. If the Rams traded up to pick 3, and took Marvin Harrison Jr. right like a total rug pull of their rival Arizona Cardinals. What does that mean for the league? The Rams, in supposedly a down year, went 10 and 7, and they arguably should have won the playoff game against the Lions. Now, everyone is expecting Cooper Cup to kind of slowly, gradually fall off. But if he doesn't and has another really good year and stays healthy, you're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, depending on how things go with Tutu Atwell, Demarcus Robinson. Like, you have to understand the gravity of the situation here. If they get Marvin Harrison Jr., he is easily supposed to be an elite receiver day one supposed to be like a Garrett Wilson. Okay. Like a Justin Jefferson, like a chase, a Jamar chase. That is what he's supposed to be. So if you add him and he literally does everything, if you added him to this offense, who is stopping the Rams when you factor in Kyron Williams and what they did on the offensive line? They went out and got Colby Parkinson. They have, you know, the emergence of Davis Allen at the end of last year and getting Tyler Higby at some point in the season. That is the best offense in the National Football League, bar none. I don't think anybody's close. If they add Marvin Harrison Jr. to this offense, they are the best in the league. And with the Rams choosing already to invest the second most amount of money second most cap in the league invested in offense behind only the Bengals. And that's not even a full thing because the Bengals, are they even invested in T Higgins? Who knows? The fact is the Rams have shown a commitment to go all in on their offense and get Stafford in that short Super Bowl window, get him the best possible class. You know, basically get him the best possible running mates. So Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to the Rams in this scenario, right? What is, like, how did, so you start the draft with this pick. Arizona's probably going to take Malik Neighbors, but they're going to cuss at you. Now you have Seattle, who just got a defensive-minded Mike McDonald hired, Right? And they're thinking defense, probably all the way. Do you influence their entire draft now? Oh, well, Marvin Harrison Jr. went to the Rams. Maybe we need to get another corner. Maybe they're looking at Latu. Maybe they're looking at Fatanu. But they're like, no, we want to get another corner. So you just impacted their draft a little bit. I'm sure the 49ers are a little bit concerned. 49ers would be very concerned. So this would be setting the tone early on. Now, again, you're, why would you trade your 2025 first-round pick? You're trading it away because you feel, if you do this, of course, if the Rams do this, they feel so confident that that 2025 first-round pick is going to be in the 30s. And if it is, who cares? 
We're not giving up the second rounder next year, but we are going to give it up in 2024. Now, why would you give up two picks? You could get two really good players. Why would you get rid of two really, you know, really good players for one elite player? Because Marvin Harrison Jr. is a generational wide receiver prospect. Like, I hate the like when how overused that is, but he's really up there with the best of the best. That's why you would do that. You're getting a blue chip prospect. If the Rams value that, they would consider doing this. Now, what happens if they do this the rest of the draft? Because I know people are going to say, well, hey, Jake, you didn't, you know, by if they do this, you're not addressing edge. You, understand this. If they do a move like this, they are saying to us, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s can't miss, and we're not going to miss. He's also worth the in investment. And again, Les Snead was around when the Falcons did the same thing for Julio Jones. And instead of trading up 16 spots, they traded up 19 spots, right? I mean, you know, so uh, tw sorry, 21 spots. They, they trade up 21 spots. The Rams trade up 16 in this scenario. So the Rams... In this sense, they would do it probably more for Marvin Harrison. And also, seeing as they didn't really make as much of a push for an edge defender in the offseason, I don't think that they were looking at the NFL draft and saying, yep, the NFL draft is where we'll find our edge defender, 100%. I don't think that they were saying they're going to go out and just go balls to the wall drafting edge defenders. If they did this with Marvin Harrison Jr., it's them admitting they feel pretty good about their roster. And to be honest with you, I feel pretty good about their roster. I've said it before. The edge defenders could be better. And you do have the draft to figure it out. But I actually did a mock draft in unison to this move for Marvin Harrison Jr. I came away with at pick 83 which I kept because again you're only giving up a first to second and next year's 2025 first round pick so still have your third you still have your other third you have you know your fifth rounds all that so I took Dominic Pooney out of Kansas the tackle so now you have a guy that plays he could be a left tackle in the future he could play guard he could even play center then I traded down from 99 and took the 108 and 129 pick from Minnesota. In that, I took Mo Kamara out of Colorado State, who is a dominant pass rusher at Colorado State. He's a little undersized, which I don't really care. And you're adding him to a rotation that you know I think he could thrive in. And they don't need to go crazy. They already spent, if they really believe in what they have, and I believe they do, if they don't get an edge early on and this changes the trajectory of it, I think they'd be fine just getting somebody like Kamara and adding him into the rotation with O'Shawn Mathis, who they already spent, you know, a sixth round pick on who, you know, for most of the mini camp rookie mini camp, he was outpacing Byron young before he got hurt. And then you have Nick Hampton, who was a fifth round pick who they really like out of app state. So, you have Byron Young and Michael Hoyt, obviously, already. Now you had Mo Kamara, and you have a little bit of a rotation there. And you still could sign a veteran. You know, like we were talking about many times on many other videos, a guy like Carl Lawson. So, that's done. Then, the 10, so that's the 108 pick. 129, Cooper Beebe's sitting there. So I'm like, hmm, okay. I can get Kansas uh, Dominic Pooney who can play left tackle, can play guard, can play center. I can get Cooper Beebe, who could potentially be a starting guard down the road. Feel really good about this draft so far. Then in round five, I get Malik Mustafa. So I bolster the safety, you know, spot. And then in the round five, you know, 154 and then 155, I go with Dwight McLaughlin out of Arkansas, who I think is an outstanding corner. He's going to be one of my top corners in this draft. And seems like everyone's sleeping on him. He's my sleeper corner. Um, then I have them taking Marcus Harris, the interior defensive lineman to bolster that interior defensive line, the sixth round, uh, 196 out of, 
um, Auburn. Then I have in the sixth round, 209, Wisconsin's Tanner Bordellini. So you add three guys to the trenches like that. Then in the sixth round, 213, Jalen Ford out of Texas. You add a linebacker, can help on special teams, can add some depth there at linebacker. Sixth round, 217, I had Isaiah Davis, the running back, to help out Kyron Williams. Hey, never sleep on late round running backs. They always get slept on, and you see guys like Chris Carson, you see guys like Isaiah Pacheco, and you're like, whoa, where'd they come from? Sixth, seventh round, pretty much can never fails. Uh, Joshua Cardi with the last pick of the Rams draft, 254. So I'm not saying, by the way, this is 11 picks. So moving up and getting Marvin Harrison Jr. and you still get all 11 picks out of it. Now, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. No, no, no. That's not the point of this video. I'm not even saying I want this to happen. But imagine if it does and tell me it's not possible. Tell me this isn't something based on the fact that Les Snead has done some unprecedented things this offseason, signing guys like Cameron Curl who don't even fit their normal thing, right? Their normal way of business, okay? It, it, they normally don't draft, you know, they don't normally sign guys like Cameron Curl. That was a great signing. They don't normally go out and double dip on interior linemen like that. They signed big time Jonah Jackson and Kevin Dotson. They signed a tight end. They don't they don't ever do that. They don't do what they did this offseason. It was an unprecedented offseason. When they went after Tredavious White and Darius Williams, like this was a different offseason. This was a lot of signing. They don't normally sign players like that. They don't go crazy in free agency. They did. Well, what's something they normally don't do? Pick in the first round. So what if the year, not only are they going to pick in the first round, they're going to make the biggest splash and overshadow everybody in the draft. Because guess what? Caleb Williams going number one overall is going to be talked about, even though it's the worst kept secret in the National Football League. And then you're going to have Washington being talked about for having a new franchise quarterback and people are going to get those photoshops going. And then all of a sudden in this scenario, think about it. You're sitting there, you're watching on ESPN or NFL Network, or you're following our live stream. Downtown Rams live stream will be on this channel. Uh, shameless plug. And pick three comes through. And you see Rams have traded up with the New England Patriots. What is the first thing you're thinking? Are you thinking? Because all the tea leaves are there from the media pushing these quarterbacks. Oh, they're going to draft, uh, you know, Michael Penix Jr. They're going to draft. No. If they did that, people would think immediately they are either taking Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. And if they turn that card in and it's like you trade all the way up for a wide receiver, yeah, because the last trade that I remember that was like that was Julio Jones. And guess what? Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr. is just like Julio Jones as a prospect. I'm not saying... He will end up being better or the same as Julio. But if he stays healthy, because Julio had some issues with injuries, if he stays healthy, good Lord, with Sean McVay, this guy can... That's the thing people don't understand. Marvin Harrison Jr. is equipped right now to go into a situation with a bad quarterback and a very mid number two receiver so dealing with double teams and so forth, and still thrive, still get to 1,000 yards. He is that receiver. So if he were to go to a plus situation like the Rams, he's not expecting that. There's no way he's expecting that. So, look, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not even saying I want it to happen. Because I'm, to be honest with you, I'm cool with a lot of different scenarios. But I'm just telling you, this is realistic. This is more realistic than I think we realize. We're about to find out, you know, how how good the Rams feel about the current state of their roster. I think too much was made of replacing Aaron Donald. I don't actually think they're going to take an interior defense alignment as early as everyone else thinks. And I definitely don't think it's a guarantee that they take anybody based on need. 
needs come and go. When you draft best player available, when you go after elite talents, those are the guys that don't go. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. you get in the third overall pick selection. Now he's your franchise wide receiver with Puka Nakua. I mean, you only have two receivers on the roster after this year. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, first off. Second, Cooper Cup is in his 30s. He's getting older, right? He's had injuries. If he has another great year, great. But Marvin Harrison Jr., fifth-year option, telling you, I like I will go as far as to say I wouldn't be shocked if they did this. Because you're giving up a second and you're giving up your first and you're giving up a first in 2025. That will likely be at the end of 2025 first round pick. I, I don't think you're giving up too much to get a wide receiver that is game breaking. I don't think you're giving up too much to get a wide receiver that's the final piece to the puzzle. Now, what you could argue, and this is why I could see them not doing this, big reason, is because if they trade it up, you're only trading up to three to get Marvin Harrison Jr. or one of the top three quarterbacks. That would be the only reason to trade up to number three. If you trade up into the single digits, you could get your franchise left tackle in the future, and now keep this in mind, and we'll do this in a separate video, but Orlando Pace, the Rams traded up to get him. They didn't trade up a ton, but they traded up to get him with the Jets. So, and he was the cornerstone to their, you know, potential dynasty that never became a dynasty, which should have. But Marvin Harrison Jr. at three, that makes sense. You're not trading up to three and taking Joe Alt. You would trade up to maybe six and taking Joe Alt, or maybe eight for Fashionu. And if you like Fuaga enough and you think he'd play left tackle in the top 10, but you're training up to three with one goal in mind, and that is to get Marvin Harrison Jr. And now I know what this is going to lead to. People are going to be like, wait a minute, Jake. If you're trading up for Marvin Harrison Jr. at three, why stop there? Why not trade for Caleb Williams at one? Because one, Chicago ain't trading that pick. Two, the Rams don't need a quarterback. I have continued to stand by that thought process. And I like Drake May, but I would not trade up for Drake May at three. And three, that is a that is a thousand points. The Rams, the next two drafts they'd have to give up for Caleb Williams, like to get that thousand points. And that would just hurt their team. So I'd be against it. But I think with Marvin Harrison Jr., if you can get Marvin Harrison Jr. for a first, a second, and next year's first round pick, and you might be you might still have to give up a, a late, you know, a fifth and maybe next year's third or something. The point I'm making here, first off, they accepted it. I was able to do it. But the point I'm making is that this is more realistic than I even realized. And so I thought it was very interesting and I should make a video on it again. I'll leave you with this. The Rams had a chance to get Marvin Harrison and they drafted Eddie Kennison. They passed on Marvin Harrison for Eddie Kennison. Now they have a chance to draft his son and they would have to trade up to three in my opinion to do it because I don't think he's going in the first two picks those will be quarterbacks the third Patriots if they choose to stay and pick a quarterback then Marvin Harrison Jr. is 100% going to four because there's no way in hell the Cardinals are going to trade away the opportunity to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. to their rival Rams so with that said, I'm Jake Ellenbogen. If you liked this, be sure to hit the thumbs up, hit the bell icon, be sure to subscribe, follow me on all social media at JK Bogan, and please drop a comment. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. I'm sure this will become some stupid AI article because I keep getting <laughs> my videos transcribed and put into articles. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it was on like Facebook where this Rams AI page 
post like these articles. So I say like hypothetical trade ideas and they'll be like, uh, rumor, the Rams are trying to trade up for Marvin Harrison Jr. So if you see that, just know, well, unless they actually are, I'll be the first one to tell you that. But if you see that, just know that it's probably AI because AI is the little worst thing to happen to anybody. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Appreciate you guys hanging out here. And uh, I can't sit here and say I would be upset if the Rams got maybe the best player in this draft. See you guys next time. Later, folks. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.